Good afternoon. Welcome to St. Gerard Magella. We ask for your silence at this time. Thank you. I am sure that the family is so glad that you are here. And now we're going to have a few remarks by Ashley. All right. Unfortunately, I do not think that the Mamma Mia soundtrack or the Macarena are in your hymnal. Yet, I could really use some pump up music right now. Um, you know, something very 60s music, seeing mom dancing on a cruise ship, offbeat, very unashamed, just going for it. But um, keeping that in mind, I find it very appropriate that I'm welcoming everyone here and joining from afar, Hawaii included. Uh, to the colorful celebration of Anne Cecilia Higgins' honor. Knowing the inevitable was coming, I actually sat down to think about how we would like to remember mom a few weeks ago, but since then, so much has changed. Through cards, stories, memories from her friends and family, I learned so much more about how you all saw mom and what she meant to you. A common theme in what I learned was always her way of welcoming others. She seemed to find the singled out people and make sure they felt included and went out of her way to make them feel special. She always had questions to ask and never made it about herself. She was beyond inclusive, which is how we should all strive to be. A huge blessing in disguise during all of this has been the memories that come flooding back when seeing and talking to old friends, family, and neighbors. I've selfishly had a blast having flashbacks from childhood, seeing trips to the lake, sleepovers, football camps, carpool to PSR, backyard pool parties, and endless laughter. The last few months, I have been a bulldog, and I know it. I'm sure to many of you it seemed selfish and inconsiderate that I wouldn't let you see your friend, but I promise you my intentions were to protect my mom's wishes and preserve your memories. Because when you think of mom, I want you to think of her in her crazy glory, bedazzled jean jackets, over-the-top costume jewelry that you never knew if she had inherited or purchased off the Home Shopping Network at 2 a.m. <laughs> Diet Coke in one hand, Connor on her shoulder, probably a handful of Mike and Ikes or Jujubees in her pocket, or running free at the bottom of her monogrammed purse. I personally want to preserve the memory of everyone's expression when they talked about mom. Whenever she comes up in conversation, there's a certain inflection put on the often repeated words, I just love your mom. Those five words in the way that they were always said, you just knew that there was some crazy story behind it. It was always a mix of adoration, confusion, humor, and pure love for someone. I just love your mom. Mom was spontaneous, independent superhero we all wish we could be. At one point in middle school, mom bought a table saw to do her own woodwork and decor. She once went to get an oil change and came back with both the Camry and a Toyota MR2 Spider because she thought it was cute. <laughs> Another time we chatted about the short-term loan she was taking out to pay for her new expensive white carpeting and then a month later gave me a call and said, I decided to buy a puppy. That is where Casey came from. Meticulously weighing pros and cons was never a step in mom's decision-making process. She just did what she wanted to do. Mom also had the choice to go and move wherever she wanted, but that thought never crossed her mind. In high school, we jokingly talked about moving to Florida to be in the warmer weather by the water, but mom's response was always the same. I could never leave my friends. The social life of this butterfly could outmatch any teeny bopper. The few times a year I was able to come home, I was always competing with a calendar of bridge, lunch, Bible study, college club, dinners, movies, shopping outings, and more bridge. This lady was on the move. Her love for her friends was unmatched. The months I spent with her leading up to today, all she ever to know, wanted to know was, well, how is Marcia's wedding? Well, what's going on with Kitty's new floors? Well, when are the walkers going to see the grandkids? Her life was a narrative of all of her friends' lives, and the fact that some of your friendships date back to childhood is a true testament of what beautiful memories you shared. When we first found out about the cancer, one of the few things mom realized was, a lot of people are going to be really sad, and you are not kidding. Everywhere this lady went, she left a trail, metaphorically and physically in the form of sometimes M&Ms. The fact I had to slowly share the heartbreaking news to mom's mailman, schnooks cashier, bank teller, mulch man, hair stylist, manicurist speaks volumes about mom's impact. 
The sorrow and sympathy each one of these people shared with me was always consistent, that Anne was one of their favorite and most special customers. Did I mention this was coming from the man that spread our mulch? <laughs> How many people have these relationships? This next part was, I was reading it, um, I'm sorry, when I was writing it, I knew it was gonna be hard, and I look up and I see a chocolate macaroon, partially eaten, that Aunt Mary had brought in, stuck in a fake flower arrangement next to the couch because she was doing this thing towards the end where she's like, mm, yes, I'm eating, I'm eating. And then you knew she just sort of like stuffed it away. Sneaky Kiku. Mom was one of the only people that knew how to deal with my feelings and emotions. The secret to her success, Ryan, pay attention, was just say nothing. For the past 15 years, I would call mom a total train wreck over school or work, and she would listen and wait, and by the end of the conversation, my problem would be resolved, I would thank her, and she never said a word. She gave me her ears, and I gave her a one-hour drama-filled monologue where all she had to contribute was the, aw, sweeties. She knew not to give me advice, so I'm thankful that I will still be able to hold these conversations and know she is listening and doing her part to solve my problems. I got very close with mom during the time leading up to today, like way too close, but I would not trade this time I had for anything. Unfortunately, death is part of the natural cycle of life, and although we feel invincible, it's a fact that we will all go someday. By accepting that fact, almost from day one of the cancer diagnosis, I think my sister and I were better able to savor every moment we had and reflect on the amazing life of the Anne Honor. We were fortunate enough to have time to talk about mom's special possessions and hear family stories. We were fortunate enough, although morbid, to talk about how mom would want this day to go. We were fortunate enough to get in as many I love yous as possible, even if she was driving me crazy at two o'clock in the morning. And we were fortunate enough to have the quality time most people don't get with their loved ones at this stage because life moves too fast and it's hard to put your obligations on pause. I started talking today about memories. Although this is not where anyone expected they would be today, we are thankful for a wonderful life lived to the fullest with friends and families who helped create so many memories along the way. You will always think of mom when you see a bright outfit at Chico's. You will always think of mom when you see a dented silver Camry. You will always think of mom when you are trying to decide at TJ Maxx, TJ Maxx between this little trinket and that little trinket. And you will always think of mom when you just need a laugh or a quick smile on your face and mom's not going anywhere because you just love my mom. So if you've ever had a conversation with my mom on the phone, I'd like to close today with her classic catchphrase of, okay, okay, bye-bye. <laughs> Again, welcome to St. Gerard Magella. We would ask you to stand now for our opening hymn, which is Amazing Grace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. As our sister Anne has died with the Lord, so may she live with him in glory. Let us pray.
O God, almighty Father, our faith professes that your Son died and rose again. Mercifully grant that through this mystery, your servant Anne, who has fallen asleep in Christ, may rejoice to rise again through him, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated now for our readings from sacred scripture. I invite forward our first reader. This is a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all people. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all people. The web that is woven over all nations, he will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away tears from all our faces. The reproach of his people will, re will remove from the whole earth. The Lord has spoken, and on that day it will be said, Behold our Lord, to whom we look to save us. This is the Lord for whom we've looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he saved us. This is the word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, we know that we have passed from death to life because we love our brothers. Whoever does not love remains in death. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life remaining in him. The way we came to know love was that he laid down his life for us, so we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, to you o Lord. Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, Everything that the Father gives me will come to me, and I will not reject anyone who comes to me, because I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of the one who sent me. And this is the will of the one who sent me, that I should not lose anything of what he gave me, but that I should raise it on the last day. For this is the will of the Father, that everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have eternal life, and I shall raise him on the last day. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. I'd like first to extend to all of you, and especially to you, Ashley and Elizabeth, the deepest sympathies of our whole parish family. Um, your mother is being held in prayer and will be throughout the coming days, as well as you, as you uh, commend her soul to God and grieve her loss and thank God for the gift of her life. And it's a privilege to be with you today uh, to offer this perfect prayer of the Mass for your mother. We have a saying that for people of faith, for people who believe, there are no coincidences. Instead, we use the word providence, believing that everything that happens is somehow provided for by God, that his plan is always underneath everything. 
And that certainly sometimes is a belief that is hard to grasp fully because in a fallen world, as we live in, there is suffering and pain and even the reality of death. And yet in the mystery of providence, God has incorporated all of this even into his plan. And I'd like to reflect with you today as we commend Anne to the Lord on two different kind of what I think are providential, some might say coincident, coincidental, alignments with things that are happening in the life of the church right now. One is this weekend we will celebrate this evening and tomorrow Trinity Sunday. Every year the Sunday after Pentecost is a special feast in honor of the Blessed Trinity, which is the central mystery of our faith that God is three persons in one God. A rather lofty theological concept. We might wonder what in the world that has to do with why we're gathered here today. But in fact, it has everything to do with why we are gathered here today. Because the fact that God exists as a trinity, as three persons united in one God, teaches us that God himself is love. Even before he creates any of us and loves us, in and of himself, God is love. The Father, Son, and Holy Spirit existing in this eternal exchange of love. Which teaches us that the fact that we even exist is because we flow out of God who is love. And therefore, that means that what is most significant in our life what is most human, made in the image of God, is that experience of love. And so in a way, it's very beautiful and providential that we have the opportunity on this weekend of Trinity Sunday to reflect upon how that mystery of love was manifest in Anne's life. The many different ways that that deepest of human realities was present in her and around her. Ashley spoke to much of it, obviously much better than I ever could. How much she loved her family, her friends, her students, and how much she was loved. It's evidenced by the gathering here, so many coming together on this day. We come together before God in his presence here. God who is love, this communion of persons in the Trinity. To now, if you will, return to him, the one whom he gave us out of love. To thank him for the many ways that love was manifest in her life. And we gather also because we believe that the love of God is stronger even than death. And that while, yes, death is always marked by sadness, grief, that pain of, of separation, nonetheless we know that God's love, which is stronger than death, can draw us through death into eternal life. This is the very mystery of the cross and resurrection, that God himself died and rose so that we who are united to him by grace can enter into that love that is stronger even than death. And so even in the midst of the grief, we have great hope that there will be a reunion one day in the halls of heaven in which there will be no more sadness or suffering or sorrow, certainly no more death, but it will be the perfect experience of love the love of God, and love for one another. Let's take comfort and consolation in that truth today as we commend Anne to the Lord. The second, it seems to me, a very providential moment in the, the church's life that applies also today is that the church right now is celebrating a whole year in honor of St. Joseph. And he is a very fitting saint to call to mind today. 
because among the many other things that St. Joseph is patron of, he is the patron of a Christian or holy death. This is because St. Joseph breathed his last in the very arms of Jesus and Mary. And so he has this particular role of teaching us, modeling for us, how to die, if you will, well, in a holy way. And as hard a struggle as these last couple months were for Anne, still, I think if we reflect, we can see that the Lord gave her, in a way, a holy death. And by that, I mean she had time to prepare. It wasn't sudden. It may have seemed quick, but it wasn't immediate, right? She had time to prepare her soul. She knew the closeness of family in these last couple months. She knew the love and support, especially of her children. And she had the grace to receive the last sacraments before she died, which were certain prepared her soul to meet the Lord. She was anointed. She received the apostolic pardon. She was ready. And again, our faith tells us that a holy death is the very passage to eternal life. And so today, we come before the altar of the Lord, the blessed Trinity who is love, to offer our thanks. Thanks for the blessings that God gave to Anne in her life, the blessing that she was to so many in her life. We thank God even for the grace of a holy death. We come together to commend her now to the Lord and to draw from him the consolation of, of faith and hope. Let us open our hearts to the Lord. Let's allow him to console us with those truths of our faith. Let's ask him for the grace that we might live our lives in such a way that when he calls us from this life, whenever that may be, we may be found worthy to enter into that perfect dwelling of love in his eternal kingdom. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. Please stand. Brothers and sisters, Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and sits at the right hand of the Father where he intercedes for his church, confident that God hears the voices of those who trust in the Lord Jesus. We join our prayers to his. In baptism, and receive the light of Christ. Scatter, scatter the darkness now and lead her over the waters of death. Lord, we ask you, hear our prayer. Our sister Anne was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome her into the halls of the heavenly banquet. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Our sister Anne spent her life following Jesus, poor, chaste, and obedient. Count her among all holy men and women who sing in your courts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your Son. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Many people die by violence, war, and famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly these sins against your love and gather them to the eternal kingdom of peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. 
Those who entrust, who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you, O Lord, to, to you alone. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The family and friends of Anne seek comfort and consolation. Heal their pain and dispel the darkness and doubt that comes from grief. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our sister Anne. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord God, giver of peace and healer of souls, hear the prayers of the Redeemer Jesus Christ and the voices of your people whose lives were purchased by the blood of the Lamb. Forgive the sins of all who sleep in Christ, and grant them a place in the kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Anne, we beseech your mercy that she who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior may find in him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Lift up your hearts. We, we lift, lift them up to the Lord. Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it is right, right and, and just. just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In him the hope of blessed resurrection is dawned that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an eternal dwelling is made ready for them in heaven. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. 
Please kneel. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving you thanks, and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Mitchell, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your servant Anne, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. Please stand. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, 
that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with, with your, your spirit. spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Catholic Church, we believe that our reception of Holy Communion unites us not only with Jesus, who is truly present in the Holy Eucharist, but that it is also an outward sign of our oneness in the Catholic faith. It's for that reason that we ask only practicing Catholics who are in the state of grace to receive Holy Communion. If you will not be receiving Communion today, you're welcome to simply remain at prayer in your place, or to come forward with your arms crossed over your chest to receive a blessing. And let us all pray together for the reunion of all Christians. We ask you for Holy Communion to form a single file line, either in the main aisle or in this side aisle. Uh, and then as you reach the front of the line, receive Holy Communion and return around the side to your pew. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should, should enter under, under my roof, but, but only say, say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Take of the one bread and one chalice. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, at least come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Gentile or Jew.
Let us pray. Lord God, whose Son left us in the sacrament of his body, food for the journey, mercifully grant that strengthened by it, our sister Anne may come to the eternal table of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Trusting in God, we have prayed together for Anne, and now we come to the last farewell. There is sadness in parting, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see her again and enjoy her friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again in the joy of his kingdom. Therefore, let us console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. Into your hands, Father of mercies, we commend our sister Anne in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed upon Anne in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us who remain to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ and are with you and with our sister forever. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In the sure hope of the resurrection, we take our leave of our sister. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Life goes on in endless song above earth's lamentation. I hear the real, the far off hymn that hails a new creation. No storm can shake. Peace of Christ makes fresh my heart, a fountain ever springing. All things are mine since I am his. How can I keep from singing? No storm can shake my inmost calm, while to Can I keep from sin?
singing. 